Um, I would just say uh, this is the, the one constant on this storm. You know, the track has been here or there, and there's been a lot of uncertainty. Um, but the one thing that's been pretty certain is that this thing's been getting stronger very consistently and completely in line with all the forecasting. And so we anticipate this arriving um, somewhere in Florida as a major hurricane. Uh, it could reach uh, for Category 4 plus winds. Um, you know, that is a significant, significant storm um, that will lead to really significant storm surge, obviously has the uh, possibility of having significant wind damage and, and destruction. Uh, but I would also say to folks, um, you know, if you're in an area that has flooded in past storms like Irma, you know, this is a slow moving storm. You know, you're almost assuredly to experience flooding uh, if this thing comes across um, and impacts you. So, so, so take preparations. Understand that that could happen. Understand that you're likely to lose power um, and, and act accordingly. So uh, the time to act is now. Uh, this storm is slower than thought of four or five days ago, uh, which means, you know, we're looking at, I think, the tropical storm force winds probably coming sometime Sunday night. Uh, so, so make the preparations that you need. Um, you do have some time, but that time um, is running out. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take some questions. We have not uh, we have not decided to do that. Um, I, I think for several reasons. I mean, one is we're still bringing in things to assist with the storm. Uh, if you noticed in the with the, with the fuel, uh, we're constantly having trucks uh, being refueled at the ports and then going to fill up these tanks at the gas stations. We've also gotten Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi to waive their uh, weight restrictions on trucks so that we can bring in more fuel from out of state. So that is happening. Uh, you have some places, I think Miami, 48% of the gas stations were out as of this morning. Uh, fuel is constantly being brought in. There's other assets that are being brought in uh, to where the storm would be. So to close off all that traffic is probably not um, the way we want to go right now. But also I would note, uh, we don't see a lot of necessarily abnormal traffic right at this minute as of, the, as of this morning. Um, now, as orders come down for evacuation, you know, that, of course, will change. Uh, but I think it's also important, and I was talking to the county officials here in Palm Beach County, you know, they really recommend uh, evacuating locally. Uh, they have shelters that are hurricane, that, that are built to withstand hurricanes. Um, it makes it much easier to be able to do that. And so if you are in an area where you're told to evacuate, know where your shelters are, know the different uh, options that you have. It doesn't have to be everyone in the east coast of Florida gets on I-95 and just keeps driving. Um, you know, we know this storm is coming in a westerly, uh, westerly direction. We know it will eventually turn north. We don't really know where it's going to turn north precisely. Um, and you could end up, you know, even driving into the storm uh, uh, if, you, if you take that route. So, um, but yes, we're going to have the shoulders open. Uh, so that will allow for, for an increased flow of traffic. Uh, Governor, what do the water levels look like in Lake Okeechobee, and what's your confidence that those le levees will hold based on the forecast? So the, the water levels have, are, are lower than they've typically been. I mean, part of that is things that, that we were working with the federal government on, uh, really to try to obviate mm -hmm. some of the environmental damage that was being caused by the discharges. Um, you know, that said, uh, you're looking at a potentially uh, significant, significant amount of rainfall. Um, and so we're in contact with the Army Corps. Uh, they um, uh, reported to me yesterday that they had, you know, capacity for another four feet. Um, but, you know, these things, a uh, storm of this magnitude and particularly how slow it's going, you know, has the capacity to dump uh, an awful lot of water uh, in into the lake. And so, we um, are in a situation where if the lake gets to a certain level, you know, they obviously have their different protocols of, of how they deal with that uh, with the federal government. Can you talk about the idea of 
this happening at the same time that we're expecting king tides and playing with Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, I think that exacerbates it. I mean, you look at some areas, um, you know, I was you know, seeing some of the images out of Jupiter where, where the water's already up to, to the dock um, in some of those places. We also have other parts of the state, uh, places like Dixie County that have been experiencing flooding. Um, Pasco County. So even if they're on the outer bands of the storm, you know, they're going to be in a situation where you will absolutely see uh, water levels rise. And so when you have a strong storm, obviously the wind can cause a lot of damage, as we saw in Hurricane Michael. It obviously leads to a lot of storm surge, which can be life threatening. But in terms of the broadest impacts of the storm, very, very likely to be because of the flooding. Um, and so that's just something people need to need to understand. And I would also say is that as the storm comes, as the water rises, you know, be very, very careful about how you're going into this. I mean, every storm, we have people try to drive through flooded streets and their cars end up, um, end up uh, getting stuck. And that, that's what's going to happen. So, so please, please be very cautious with the water. What in terms of the nursing homes that are not Well, no. So the the state is taking the taking visits um, to to some of them. Some of them are being contacted via phone. Now, not all of them are in the path of the storm, and so um, like in Palm Beach, you know, the vast vast majority of them um, have have complied. Um, and so what we're doing is we're informing local officials. Um, we're informing them that they're not meeting their obligations, and um, and obviously now's the time to make alternative arrangements. I mean. You and, and you know, I'm glad that this case came down in Broward. I mean, I'm glad, glad it happened, but I'm glad those people are being held accountable because I think that sends the message now going into this storm. If you have vulnerable people in your care, it's your responsibility uh, to make sure uh, that, the, that you have a plan in place to protect those folks. I mean, you know at this point you could lose power. Uh, and so, so what are you going to do uh, if, if that ends up happening? And so, you know, that is really where it is responsible. We've also had, I mean, where's Eric Salagi, FPNL? You know, they, they've written letters to all the nursing facilities about, about this. I don't think any of them responded to, to FPNL, did they? So some of them just haven't done that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we have an, uh, a website now where you can go and click on a county, and it has all the stats and everything. And, and, and so you know where the potential problems are. Um, but these folks have got have to step up and, and, and protect these folks. I'm 